CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to download, install, and then add a device to the viewing software for this series of DVR. First, you need to download the software. You might have the download link be sent to you via email, uh, or we may have a link on our website to the software. Either way, you need to download the software, and it might take you to Google Drive. I'm just gonna copy and paste that URL into my Google Chrome window here, and then hit enter. So after clicking the link, you should be brought to this page or you may be brought to the export page. If you're not on the export page, you do need to click the download button at the top right hand side or click the download button down here. I'm gonna click the download button at the top right hand side of the window. It's gonna say there's issues and it just means that the file is too large for Google Drive to scan it, so I'm gonna download it anyway. So I need to click download anyway. It's gonna download the software to my hard drive and then I need to open it to install it. So after it's finished downloading, keep in mind yours may take a while to download. It is a relatively large file of 244 megabytes. I'm on a very fast internet connection, so it's already downloaded. You can pause the video if yours takes longer to download. After I have it downloaded, I need to click on the software to open it. I'm opening it using Chrome. If you can't find it, you need to open your file explorer and then find it in your downloads folder. It's likely gonna be the there in your downloads folder. After you've opened the software, it's gonna say it protected your PC because it's not able to scan it. You can click the more info button and then click the run anyway. It's gonna ask you to choose your language. You click okay. Then you're gonna install the software to your Windows computer. You're gonna click next going to continue installing the software to the computer. And finally, it's finished installing the software and we can leave the launch software checkbox checked because we're going to want to open this software and then add a device to it. So I'm going to launch the software by clicking the finish button. So after opening the software, it's going to bring you to this login screen and the default username is admin and the default password is 123456. Now I'm going to choose to remember this password and then have it lo auto log into this software. This way I don't have to log in every time. You can change this password at another time if you wish. So I'm gonna click the login button after entering in the password 123456. It was able to log me in. On first run, you're gonna to need to create some security questions and answers. I'm just gonna go ahead and create some real quick. Make sure that you do not lose or forget your security questions or you'll lock yourself out of the software. I've created my questions here and I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay or you can skip creating the questions. I'm just gonna click okay and set those as my security questions. Now it's gonna ask you to partition one of your hard drives. Now this allows you to do local recording here on your desktop with either your cameras or your system. Uh, I just want to live view my system at this time and I don't really want it to record on my computer. I want it, the recordings to stay on my DVR or NVR. So I'm going to click cancel. Now to add a device to the software, we first need to go to resource management. You can either do that by going to the main menu and the resource management options here and clicking add, edit, or delete device. Or at the top, we have the resource management tab. So I've clicked the tab. Again, you can get here from the home screen by clicking the resource management button or again clicking the add, edit, or delete devices. All three of those clicks took me to the same screen here. Now on the left-hand side, we have the device types. Encoding devices are DVRs or NVRs. So that's the primary 
category we're going to want to focus on for this video. There's a bunch of other different device types, but again, we're adding a DVR or NVR, which is an encoding device. So we're going to stay on this device type. To add my device, I need to click the Add button. It's going to take a second to search my network for the device that I can add. It's actually found my DVR. I haven't named my DVR anything, so its name is the default device name, name. Here we can see its IP address is 192.168.1.223. And you can verify that by going to your DVR or NVR, navigating to the network settings page, and verifying that this is the IP address. I am confident that this is the IP address for my recorder, so I can click the checkbox next to it. And then I'm going to click OK. It's going to attempt to log in to my recorder after it's audited automatically. And it seems like it was not able to log into my recorder because there's no information being pulled. So what I need to do is click the Edit button and make sure that it has the correct password. I know that my password's more than six characters, so I'm going to enter the password for my DVR into this. So essentially, all this software is doing is talking to my system over my local network and attempting to log into it. If it doesn't have the correct password, it's like trying to access your email or your Facebook account. If you don't have the right password, then you can't access your account. If the software doesn't have the right password for my recorder, the software can't log into my system. So I'm, I've edited that password by clicking the pencil icon, which is the edit icon, entering in my password manually, and then I'm going to click the OK button. So now the software should be able to log into my encoder. After a few seconds, you can see that the DVR was able to send the number of channels. So this is a 16 channel recorder, has 16 alarm inputs, and it has four alarm outputs. So if you don't see any of this information being pulled through, then you either, ha either have a, an IP address issue, or as I just showed you, you may have a password issue. After entering the correct password and clicking the OK button, the software was then able to log into the DVR and pull the channel number and in this information here. Hopefully this video helps you install the software and then add your DVR or NVR to the software. Continue watching our tutorials to learn how to use the software with your DVR or NVR. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.